The third richest place in the world is, after America and China, is nowhere. Because the man's written a book on it, and it's very, very interesting, because of shell companies that have been created by a German banker who was living in England and then enabled by the English banking system, which can do so many wonderful things. And it means that now this third richest place is absolutely nowhere in the world, and there are people in Japan and China. So if you are a very wealthy Chinese businessman, you can use a surrogate mother in Japan to have your baby born in Japan so it doesn't look like a citizen of China. So you put all your money into that child and your child is your shell company. And money all over the world is floating around in this land and it's touching no one. And it really matters. And it matters because where money is pouring means that increasingly we touch, physically touch humans less. We, we say hello to them less. We go out and meet them less. And it means that in places like London, there are people who did not know that there were people who didn't like globalization. And so they held this nice vote to see if we'd like to go, if we still want to be part of this nice Europe where we all go on holiday in the summer and, and sit in Italy. And they were staggered to realize that there were people in Britain who didn't go on holiday to the Mediterranean and didn't want to be part of Europe and saw all foreigners as a little bit dangerous. Uh, but also the surprise uh, was, of course, Theresa May said uh, when she took on the mantle of leading the Brexit, which is probably regretting quite a bit these days, uh, she was <laughs> complaining about those people who think they're citizens of everywhere and hence they're citizens of nowhere. I'm actually a proud citizen of nowhere. I've worn off my national insignia <laughs> on my passport. Um, and I'm pretty fine with that. But it's a different nowhere from the nowhere you described. The nowhere you described is very much the nowhere of abstraction. But there is also nowhere Theresa May was complaining about, and that's probably where I'm sitting. These people who actually feel like, yeah, I can switch countries. I actually do feel uh, not exactly beholden to a state, because a state to me is just like my phone company. It's a tool. What she wanted, and what naturalists want is, of course, they want the emotional feeling, a connection. And this is, of course, where it actually gets to the human level. What kind of connection do you have? I belong to a particular tribe, the academic tribe, and I feel at home at universities uh, on both hemispheres. But that's very different from the tribe some other people belong to. And understanding and managing this in a globalized world is getting very tricky.